Are you looking to centralize all your work and projects into one platform that also has a modern approach to work management? Well, Smartsheet, a popular project and work management platform, might be the right fit for you and your growing teams. Today, I'm going to share how to use this flexible and intuitive platform for dynamic work and project management activities. My focus is to get you up and running in under 20 minutes. Okay, so with that covered, let's go ahead and get started with Smartsheet. To arrive here at Smartsheet, if you're completely new to this platform, simply head over to your browser and type in smartsheet.com or feel free to click on the link in the description below this video and that's going to take you here. Then to get started for free, simply navigate up to Try Smartsheet for free. Navigate down and add your email that you use for work. Then click on Try for free or log in if you already have a Smartsheet account. Then navigate over to your email inbox and locate the confirmation email. You'll see a link, click on that link and you'll be taken to your Smartsheet account. Then you'll be asked to add an account password, go ahead and do that. Then add your first name and last name and select your team type. I'm going to navigate down and simply locate project management. Select what you manage. This is not essential for now, so you can select none of these if you like. For me, I'm going to select these three options and then click on next. Here we can add our first Smartsheet project. However, I want to do this inside our account. So I'm going to navigate down and click on no thanks. And then let's navigate back to home. Okay, so here we are inside our Smartsheet account. Now, when you get started for free, you'll have access to 30 days of the business plan. During or following this 30 day trial, you can decide if you want to upgrade or downgrade your Smartsheet account. Okay, so let's first take a look at some of the Smartsheet templates for project and work management. This will give us a brief preview of the spreadsheet style interface that Smartsheet is known for. Okay, so to start a new project, simply navigate down here or locate create on the left hand side. And let's take a look at all the different templates. Here we can search for the different templates or we can locate a template type using this drop down. Let's click out of here and have a look at some of these project management templates. Below each project type, we can see the level of complexity. I'm going to navigate back up to the top and take a look at this project schedule management. Feel free to navigate through this template preview and then click on create from template. Give Smartsheet a moment to load your template. Here we can first quickly invite and share this project with our team members. I'm going to invite a team member and then navigate over to the right hand side and choose the permission level. For example, Emma is going to help me manage this project so I'm going to select editor and then click on share. Let's close out of this interface. If we navigate over to the left hand side, you can see our project name here. We can rename this if we like. And within this workspace, we have workspace items. We're currently on the task tracker. If I select project dashboard, that's going to take me to this template dashboard. And then we have tasks due by assignee. Now these icons to the left of our different items represent the type of item. For example, these two item types represent reports. So these are report items. This purple sheet icon here represents a sheet. So this is a sheet item. Then this pie graph icon here identifies this as a dashboard. Now, if we navigate up to add, we can go ahead and add a new sheet with these different view types. We could also create a report based on our sheet data as well as a dashboard or a folder. Okay, let's close out of this and navigate back over to our task tracker sheet and close this sidebar. Now this spreadsheet interface inside of Smartsheet is where you're going to be spending most of your time when it comes to managing projects and different aspects of your work. And again, if you're familiar with Google Sheets or Excel, it won't take you long to get familiar with Smartsheet's interface as Smartsheet uses a dynamic spreadsheet interface. Okay, so we have our columns up here inside this template. With each of these different columns, we can customize, add and edit these columns the way that we like. Then over on the far right hand side, you can see we have this visual Gantt chart. Then we have formatting options up above, again, similar to a spreadsheet. And then over on the far right, we have these other elements that we can leverage, like adding comments, attachments, adding proofs, and more. We'll dive into these different elements shortly. Okay, so let's navigate back to home and create a new project from scratch. I'm going to come down and click on save, and then navigate over to browse. And this is where we can manage all our workspaces. Let's go ahead and create a new workspace by clicking create, and then select workspace. A workspace is the top level inside your Smartsheet account and this is used to manage a collection of projects or related items. For example, if I click here, I'm going to change this name to client projects. Then if I navigate down to this new sheet and click on these three dots, I'm going to rename and change this to web design. The sheet is going to be used to manage all our web design clients. Click on rename 
And again, if we want to add other workspace items, simply click on add. And then here we can create another sheet, report, dashboard, and we can also manage our workspace items inside a folder, or we can import. And here we have these different importing options. Let's click out of this. And then with this workspace, what I can do is navigate up to these three dots and click on share. And like I mentioned earlier, invite your team members to join you on this project. I'm going to invite Emma and she helps me manage these client projects. Let's close out of this. Then navigate over to primary column and click on these three dots and then rename this column. I've added project name. This is for our primary column, then click on OK. Then let's navigate over to column two, three dots, rename column. And then with these other columns, other than the primary column, we can change the type. I can select any of these column types. I'm happy with text and number and then hit OK. Again, take your time to customize the different column types. This is going to be called budget. Then under column, I'm happy with text and number again. And then column four, rename column, start date. And the column type is going to be date and OK. Then what we can do is navigate up here, click on the three dots. You can also right click to generate these options and then insert column to right. I'm going to add end date. And again, the column type is date, then hit OK. So take your time to add your different columns up here inside your first sheet. I'm going to quickly add a few more columns now. Okay, so I've quickly gone ahead and added a few more columns. Now under budget, what I'm gonna do is highlight this, these rows here, navigate over to formatting, and then click on this icon here. I can also change the currency format if I like. I'm happy with that. Then across here, remember we added a timeline. If I right click and click on rename column, you'll see that this is a duration type. Now we can automatically enable the duration between the start and the end date of each project or task or item. To do that, simply click on OK, then navigate over to your primary column and right click up here or click on the three dots, then navigate down to edit project settings and then enable dependencies and hit OK. Now here we can customize the working days if we like. At the moment, the working days are Monday to Friday. I'm happy with these default settings, so let's go ahead and click on OK. And now if we navigate across, you'll see that we have duration over here. So I no longer need this timeline. I can click here and delete column and then navigate across to duration and drag this and place that next to the end date. Now, if I change any of these dates here, the timeline, the duration will change over here. For example, 41 days, let's click here and change the date to the 27th, the end date or due date. And now the duration is 43 days. I'm going to click up here and then rename and call this timeline. I'm happy with that. Now it's important to note when you've made any changes, you wanna navigate over to save and that's gonna save your changes or you can navigate up to file and click on save. Now, because we have a timeline and we have these dates here, start dates and end dates for our projects, what we can also do is navigate up to grid view and then select Gantt view. And that's going to add a Gantt view, a timeline view on the right hand side. So what I can do is move this over here and I'm actually going to close out of this and move this across slightly. We can still see our columns across here by scrolling across and we can also see a visual representation of our timeline. Here we have the dates up here and we can see our different projects. For example, e-commerce full package. You can see that's this row over here, e-commerce full package. And we have the days up here. So that's how we can add a Gantt view to visually see our project task or item timelines. Now, what we can also do Hey guys, just quickly, did you know that over 90% of you that enjoy our free educational content have not yet subscribed? It would mean a lot to me if you drop a comment or hit subscribe if you love what I'm creating. This helps us grow the channel and motivates me to create bigger and more impactful tutorials for you to consume for free. Okay, so with that happy note, thank you in advance and let's get back to the video. And as you can see, we have predecessors. This is because we enabled dependencies inside this main column. Remember we right clicked or clicked on these three dots. Then we went down to edit project settings and we enabled dependencies. So now we have a predecessors column. Let's click on okay, navigate across. And what this means is we can add dependencies to each of these different rows. So for example, maybe you're managing projects, tasks, or other types of items. And you want to ensure that one task, one row, one project needs to be completed first before you can move on to the next item. So first I'm actually going to change the date of this, the end date to let's say June the 28th. And then the start date is going to be the same day as the end date here, which is going to be May the 30th. Okay, so you can see that change on our timeline. Now, if we navigate over to predecessor and click here and the pencil icon, row two standard redesign, this project is dependent on row one and automatically this data will be generated. The project name, e-commerce package 101, which is row one over here. 
This is the most common finish to start. So when row one, e-commerce package 101 is completed in terms of the end date, then we can start working on standard redesign. We can also add a lag in here if we want. For example, one day we can add one, but I do not want to add a lag. We can also add other dependencies if we like. I'm going to come down and click on OK, and you can see this arrow over here. Once this project is complete, then we can move on to this project here. This project has a predecessor, is dependent on this project. I could do the same for this one, pencil icon, row four, click out of here, and then click on OK. And if we navigate across, package redesign, this project here, is dependent on the basic design 101 being completed first. Now we can also navigate up to Gantt view and add these other views. For example, let's click on card view, and you can see we now have a card view based on our different statuses. And we can customize some of these elements up here. I'm going to navigate across again and click on grid view. And that's gonna take us back here. Now remember, when you make any changes, make sure you click on save to save your data. Now, if we navigate across, you can see under status, if I right click here and come down to rename column, we have the different values I added earlier, created in progress, stuck and complete. You can add more if you like, then hit okay. And remember to save your changes. Okay, now let's navigate down to workspaces and here we have our first sheet. Now, what I'm going to do is navigate up to File, then Save as New, and change this to Marketing Campaigns. Essentially, I wanna create a new sheet that's going to be used to manage my client's marketing campaign projects. Here we can choose to save in, I'm happy with client projects, and then click on Save. The reason I did this is I like this layout, this project structure. Again, what I would do is make some changes to the client data, the project data. For example, change the project names, to Google Ads campaign, for example, or Facebook ad campaign, and then add the different values across these different columns. And again, once you've made any changes, simply click on save. Okay, let's navigate over to add and add a new sheet, another grid, and I'm going to name this task tracker. And this is the sheet that I can use to manage all my tasks related to each of my client projects within marketing campaigns and web design. For example, I would change this, right click, rename to tasks and hit okay. And similar to what I've showed you, take the time to add your different columns and input your data. And again, save your changes. Let's navigate over to add and add a folder. I wanna create a folder for client reports. Then what I can do is navigate up to add and add a report. Here we can choose row report, uses data from sheets, or sheet summary report, uses sheet summary fields. I'm going to click row report, go ahead and choose your workspace or locate a sheet. I'm going to locate this sheet and click on next. I'm going to add client, budget, and then timeline. You can include any columns based on the sheet that you selected. Then click on next. Here we want to select a field. For example, budget is less than, and then add additional conditions. And that's gonna help you generate the type of report that you want to create. And that's gonna show a report of all my projects with a budget under 10K. We can also navigate up here and add additional columns, sheets, filters. We can summarize and we can sort and group. For example, group, Navigate down, status, by ascending, OK. So these are my projects under 10K, grouped by different statuses. Now the data flows between your reports and your sheets that you have connected. So if you make any changes inside your sheets, that's going to impact your reports. Go ahead and name your report. Then what we can do is navigate over to add and then create a dashboard. If you wanna learn more about creating dashboards, I will add relevant tutorials and resources down below in the description. Okay, let's click out of here and navigate back over to this sheet, which is where we manage all our web design clients. We can navigate up to automation and you can simply create workflow automations. We can also navigate over to forms and you can create a form to capture data to flow into your sheets. Then we have connections and this is for connecting your different assets. Now, if we navigate over to the far right hand side, like I mentioned earlier, this is where we can preview conversations. You can select a specific row, for example, we have row one selected and we can add a comment and tag our team members. We can add comments specific to sheets and we can see all and unread conversations. Below that, we can add attachments. Then we can add proofs. For example, proof of work completed in order for our team to move to the next project. Below this, we have brand folder. This is a digital asset management platform that is run by Smartsheet, more ideal for larger organizations. Below this, we have update requests. Here you can see all update requests here. Let's close out of that. And then down here, we can publish. We can see our activity log, summary. And then if I click here, 
we can connect to Jira as well as Salesforce. Let's navigate back over to the left hand side. Again, we have notifications. We can search for specific assets inside our account. We can browse. This is where we can manage all our Smartsheet assets. We also have recent, recently opened, favorites, resource management. Again, if you want to learn more about resource management, I'll add the relevant resources down below in the description. If we click on work apps, essentially with work apps, you can easily build apps that work for you using Smartsheet and external content from other third party tools. Again, if you want to learn more about work apps, I'll add relevant tutorials and resources down below in the description. Then if we navigate down to the bottom, we have your account. You can manage users as well as your billing, upgrade to a different plan, as well as personalize your account and more. However, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this brief Smartsheet tutorial. And there we have it for this Smartsheet tutorial for beginners. Now, if you have any questions about work or project management using Smartsheet, make sure to pop those down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.